Hello and welcome to Zim Docs. I am Dr. Abstract and in this Docs we're going to take a look at sprites. So we'll go to the site now, zimjs.com, and maybe before we go into the Docs let me show you what a sprite is. We can see that in the examples. This space guy is a sprite. And he's been put in a dynamo, so it's a, a sprite that can change speed and direction. Uh, but you can also shoot him shoot him, <laughs> or shoot, <laughs> have him shoot, <laughs> and that goes to a different animation. So the sprite sheet can have uh, multiple animations and you can go to those those animations. So that's one example. How about some others? Oh, this one right here on CodePen. Up top, this is Pragma. Hello, Pragma. And she's a sprite sheet, or a sprite. So you can see that uh, it's in a sort of a long loop and she'll do that again. And it helps animate the page a little bit. Cool, huh? So what a sprite sheet is made from is, uh, let me show you one more example in here. Uh, it was, which one? Oh yeah, these sprite scrollers, uh, for instance. So this guy, he, this is on CodePen. He walks around, and that's what we'll do. We'll make that with the docs and stuff like that. Uh, let me show you what that sprite sheet looks like then. We'll drop down into some code here. Oh, different sprite guy. but it, Or maybe it's the same one. I can't remember. I've got two of these <laughs> by this really cool animator, Antonio. Thank you, Antonio. So this uh, sprite sheet right here has different frames. And sometimes those frames are regular, as in divided up evenly, in which case you can just say, hey, make a sprite sheet with this row number of rows and columns, or columns and rows. Sometimes the sprite sheet was made with something like Texture Packer, which packs them all in closely and then provides data for where these frames are, usually in a JSON file. So here is data telling us how big those frames are and where they are and stuff. So that's the data for this sprite sheet. Uh, if you have a sprite sheet that is packed in closely like that, you won't be able to really easily guess how to make a sprite from it. Uh, you need the data. Either that or you've painstakingly got to move these around in something like Photoshop until they're in the right place. I'll show you an explosion. We can find that explosion now. It's in the kids section of Zim. H-I-J-K-L-M-N-O-P. Zim has become quite large. It's almost rivaling, rivaling uh, the Dan Zen site in terms of the <laughs> number of things there. H-I-J-E. <laughs> oh, brother, where the heck am I? And the explore section is even worse. Uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, kids. There they are. Uh, in the kids, under the assets, here is a boom.png. This is an example of a sprite sheet that is evenly distributed, and so we can do the rows and columns. Do you, do you want to see that one going? We'll go back into our, close that down. Here's the Zim Kids Workshop, and if we scroll down, this is at Zim Kids. It's a link at the bottom of uh, Zim. Uh, here's an explosion. We're showing the kids how to make explosions. That's a particle emitter explosion, but in level three we have an asteroid explosion. So the asteroid is just an image, a bitmap rotating, but that's a sprite sheet right there. All right, I think we've talked enough about sprite sheets. Let's go into the docs then and find them there. Uh, there are a couple basic sprite sheet examples down below here under Texture Packer. Texture Packer is the place where you can go. It's kind of free, but kind of not free. You may as well buy it. It's like 40 bucks or something like that. And it can make these sprites from a bunch of images. You have a bunch of images, you throw them into Texture Packer and it creates them. All right, so we were heading on back to the docs though, weren't we? Uh, okay. In the docs, we look up Sprite, Sprite, and here it is, although it's right down here in the display, right at the start of the docs here, the Sprite. So we can pass in an image and the calls and rows. That's how we would do it if we knew the calls and rows. Sometimes the count doesn't match the calls and rows, so you would pass that in. Sometimes there's offsets, spacing differences, that kind of things. So the Sprite is initially set up to do that. 
But then there's also a JSON parameter that allows us just to pass in a single JSON uh, value and load the sprite sheet that way. So that's what we're going to take a look at. There's also the CreateJS way of making a sprite sheet. We can load in a CreateJS sprite sheet and so forth, as well as other features that are in there that you can then read about in the docs. And there's more links um, to the uh, examples there. All right, uh, or no, those weren't links to examples. Those were links to the easel or CreateJS one here, the links to the sprite examples, some of them, as well as examples here that you've got in the docs. Okay, a bunch of different ones, how to make sprite sheets from here and from there. Uh, all right, let's dig into the code though and take a look at some of these things. Um, code, code, sprite. So we're loading in Zim 10 and CreateJS and minify that to the side. We've brought in the assets of the Space Guy PNG and the Space Guy JSON. So this is the image right here, and this is the data right here. Okay, that came from the export of uh, from um, Texture Packer, which has an easel. JS example. If you read in the docs, you'll see how to a uh, little bit of hints about that, and there's also documented in the code itself. Uh, there are different ways to, or different types of data for sprite sheets. Different programs use different types of data. There is an Easel JS export. Easel is part of the Create JS uh, packages, so that's what we use. And so you would set the Easel setting, and then you would get the right the right data. Here's the data, here's the file. So when we make a sprite, we come into right right at the moment, there is no sprite, so we'll open the browser. Uh, there's nothing, nothing on the stage. And uh, let's try making a sprite then. New sprite. If you can spell it, you can do it. New sprite. Uh, if we need to get to a far away parameter, like not one of the early parameters, rather than go null comma, null, comma, null. Hopefully you know in Zim we can go there directly by putting in the configuration object, the squiggly brackets there. And this is the Zim Duo technique, we call it, the second way to get there. And that would be a JSON, the JSON parameter. And then we say what that JSON parameter is, which is, oh, it's not just spaceguy.json, just be careful with that. This needs to be loaded and collected in frame.asset. So it is frame.asset and now json. Dot, uh, what was it? Sorry, space guy dot JSON. Space guy dot JSON. There we go. All right, so what we're doing is we're passing the reference to the JSON. Uh, it's not the JSON file per se, but the actual JSON code itself that happens to be in this file. And we can then add that to the stage. So dot center on the stage. And if we do, sometimes people get confused with sprites. If that's all they do, then we would end up seeing a, a sprite on the stage. So we refresh. There it is, but it's not moving, <laughs> no matter what you do. So that just loads that one image. In there, it's in other words a paused sprite, so we need to run it. Dot run. Uh, also, if you're coming from CreateJS, CreateJS has a play method. Uh, we don't use the play method. The play method plays it um, at the frame rate in a sense, so you're kind of stuck with this frame rate unless you change the frame rate. What run does, uh, run ties it in, basically, run uses Zim Animate in behind. So all of the features that are available in Zim Animate, I think most of them anyway, are available here in run. And uh, for instance, well, if we just run it, it will run once. Let me refresh here. There it goes running. And it's running at a default time of one second. So we can set the time. If we want it to go faster, we might have 300 milliseconds. And then it will go faster. Broop, broop, broop. So there we can change the speed of the sprite without having to change the frame rate, which is pretty annoying. 
So uh, I'll keep it at a time of one second, which is the default, so we wouldn't even need that. And let's loop it. Once again, all of the things that are available in Zim Animate are, uh, are available right here in the run. So if we refresh, now it's going at a slower rate, and as you can see, it is looping. Uh, we could also rewind, which looks kind of cool how I got there. Rewind colon true. <laughs> um, so these are some neat things that, that we can do. So it goes forward and, <laughs> and then it goes backwards and it goes forwards and then it goes backwards. <laughs> Fine, huh? Doing the, the moonwalk. Uh, but um, if you want to do that kind of control, you may consider putting this into what's called the dynamo. And I'll show you that in just, just a second. In here as well, you can also go to different frame num and, or something like that. Look up the parameters for, for run uh, or a label. So we could say what label to go on, jump or something like that. Uh, that would be as a string though. Get my other, there we go. So uh, that would then start playing at the label jump, uh, that kind of thing. And labels can also specify uh, or anima animations, I think, uh, and maybe there's animations as well, can specify a set of labels to run to. Actually, it could, in various repeating ways and at various different speeds, it is all sort of massively um, convenient uh, if, if you want to play sprites in, in Zim. Some of it piggybacks on the on CreateJS, but also we've added some more things to it to, to be able to handle things properly. You can also in here, because this is uh, Zim Animate in a sense, you can have it call back when it loops. So every time it loops, you can call something, a function, and, and these types of things. So where you're looking at that in the docs is, if we scroll down, it's not just all about the making of a frame, it's also about the run. So this run method is very important. And here's all of the different things that you can do with the run, as well as explanations of all of those different things. So as you can see, quite, quite powerful. You can also pause run and tell it to pause or, or not pause. You have various properties as well, total frames and whether it's running or not, which frame you're on and, and, and that type of thing. So uh, that's what's available in the docs here. We had mentioned throwing a sprite into a dynamo. I know this is getting to be a bit of a lengthy doc, but uh, there's lots that you can do with sprites. And so we'll carry on here. Uh, we have an example over here of the side scroller. Let's open that up. I'm not sure if this works locally. Open in browser. We shall see. There it is. And this one uses keyboard. So now I'm using the keyboard to go around and I think a space bar to shoot. Boo, roo, boo. So we've got a few things going on that, that's a little bit different. One is we're using keyboard control. You could also use a mouse control on this. It's using a motion controller to control the speed of the background. The background is a scroller and the scroller has been put into an accelerator. And the sprite here is a dynamo that allows us to do a multi-speed um, sprite based on a percentage speed and that that dynamo can also be put in the same accelerator so the scroller is put in the accelerator the dynamo is put in the accelerator and all we're doing with the motion controller is controlling the accelerator so we're controlling one thing and it controls the whole speed of this that's how that other other sprite was done as well uh, that we first very saw the the one where the space guy was shooting. Oh, hey, this is space guy shooting too. <laughs> what do you know? Yay, the space guy shooting. So here is that side scroller. I'm not sure. I think there's a link to it. Yeah, remember in the code pen examples, there was a link to the side scroller in there. There's two different ones. So you want to check out those. Uh, but uh, just going quickly through that, there's the tile that we're using for a, a background. Here's the sprite that we're loading in. Uh, did I ever show you, I'm just trying to think, I don't think I showed you in the kids site how we loaded the sprite in. Pretty easy. You say the sprite image, comma, eight, comma, six for the rows and columns. And that was it. We, we took you through that a little bit. In this case, we're using a JSON file. But for the other one, we would say the image, which is not that. It would be like, I think we called it boom. Sorry to 
skip off here, boom.png or something like that. Then we would say how many uh, columns it has, followed by how many rows it has, whatever that was. And that was it. And then you've got a sprite that is loaded from something that is regular, like with, with uh, uh, a tile, a uh, regular tile. Anyway, I'm doing that and back on to what we were talking about here. There is us loading in the sprite. We've changed the registration. What that does is it helps flip the sprite. It just looks a little bit better when it flips because we're going to be uh, flipping the scale of it. We have a tile foreground. Oh, this is the stuff in the foreground. We then have a bunch of scrollers that are taking the background, the foreground. Here's the dynamo. The dynamo receives the sprite, so the sprite for the dynamo. We're setting the reversible for false. Otherwise, if you went backwards, he would actually animate backwards. like So you can make him go forward or walk backwards. We've set that to false, and that means it will automatically flip him, or we flip him somewhere, I can't remember where, maybe down in the motion controller. So here's the, another accelerator for uh, a background scroller, I guess. Um, which one's the dynamo? Oh, no, this is accelerator for all of them. So we have a scroller, a scroller, and a dynamo, and we add the scroller, the scroller, and the dynamo. This is the single accelerator that will now control them all. In the motion controller, we say, hey, please control the accelerator. And uh, this is saying in key down and giving some min maximum percent speeds, uh, that type of stuff along the horizontal, and a boundary so he can't um, go off, I guess. <laughs> anyway, um, super duper. We're emitting an emitter when we shoot and when we jump. Oh, I didn't show you the jumping. We said space guy dot animate. That's animating the height of the whole space guy sprite itself. We could in there, we're pausing the dynamo or running, we, we sort of pause the sprite from moving. That's how we treated that. So if we look at him jumping, we'll make a move and then he jumps. Oh, I don't know. Jumping's not working. Um, but jumping should work. It'll work in that example that you had. Oh, we lost it. Blop, beep, blop, beep, bloop, bloop, bloop. Oh, it's a keyboard jump. Okay, maybe I was doing the wrong, yeah, W, I was hitting the space bar to jump, so that's the wrong one. If you want to see that, then open in browser. Uh, w or an up arrow, that will jump him. Boo, oh, there he goes. So all we've done to make him jump is just pause him. If you wanted to, you could, <laughs> looks like he's skipping along. If you wanted to, you could have a different animation series for a jump and you could just run that animation as he jumps. We've done things like that as well. Uh, the skateboard example, he skateboards and then he kicks his legs and then he rides along and he kicks his legs and you know, those types of things. Uh, you can change those dy dynamically quite easily. All right, I think we've done pretty well to give you an overview of sprites. There's there's obviously more involved in some of the, those things, but you can read through the examples, the many examples that we have here at Zim for sprites and sprite sheets, and take a look into Texture Packer 2 if you really want to get into this. Right, we love you. Have a great day. This is uh, Dr. Abstract for Zim Docs. Ciao.